My call sign is Ate. Uh, I used to fly Rafale Navy and I was an instructor for the French Navy on the Rafale. I flew from aircraft carriers, from US aircraft carriers or French aircraft carrier, and I displayed around Europe as well in air shows. As you might expect, my favorite aircraft is the one I flew for, for a couple hundred hours with the French Navy. So it's uh, the Rafale M, uh, Rafale M for, for Marine, uh, for, for the French Navy version. It is a very nice aircraft to fly. I really like the fact that the cockpit is very accurately recreated. Uh, when you fly the, the Rafale in, um, in Ace Combat 7, you can really see the different screens in front of you. We basically use three major screens. The so one in the middle gives you all the information for the radar both in God's eye view, 2D view, and in 3D view. And on the side, you have your weapon page system and your HSI that helps you navigate the aircraft as well, and all the information you need in the head-up display. So it's a very good trainer. It's a, it's a, it's a very good sensation to be able to, to fly the aircraft I flew. Rain droplets. You're going to see them on the canopy as well. It's something you, you find in a video game as well, in Ice Combat 7. You can see them. And we have a big game with the, with the clouds in the fighter pod community. It's called the cloud surfing. So let's say you find a, a small cloud or a bigger cloud, and you're going to try to fly your jet as close as possible to the cloud without touching it. So if you want to try it in Ace Combat 7, what you have to do is fly as close as possible to the cloud without getting any rain on your canopy. If you get some rain on your canopy, it's like touching the cloud, so you lose. That's what we call cloud surfing. It's a very, very good way to get some good flying skills, know how to handle your aircraft, and know how to move it in 3D as well, because clouds aren't flat. Okay, so if uh, today I had to lead uh, two aircraft against two enemy aircraft in a multiplayer, so two against two, the tactic I would use, air-to-air -air tactic I would use, is called the bracket. Basically, if two enemy aircraft are in front of me like this, I'm going to use my two aircraft, and I'm going to try to go what we call out of plane, out of phase. So I have a lot of distance between my two aircraft, so that the enemy aircraft can only focus on one of us at a time. So basically, if the two other guys fly together, we're going to be one very high to the left, the other one very low to the right, and they will have to choose either my wingman or myself. And as they do so, I'm going to do what we call an early turn and, uh, and shoot them as they don't see me. That's a very basic but very efficient tactic. So it can be seen as having a bait and a hunter, and somebody's going to do the bait, the enemies are going to see him and attack him, and maybe the other one is hiding in the clouds, he comes out and he shoots. What appears to me as the closest to reality is the rhythm. Um, every time you start a mission in the, in the game, you're going to be briefed, and the briefs are rather long. Uh, you have to understand that in real life, a briefing can last between 25 minutes up to an hour. So every time you step inside the aircraft, you have a specific mission to accomplish. You don't just fly around for fun. So stepping into the aircraft with a mission in mind, with an objective, is something that is extremely realistic. I really like the way the briefings are designed and are made. Um, the second point will be the workload management. As soon as um, the flying starts, you're saturated with stuff to do. A lot of enemy aircraft, a lot of stuff on the ground happening, a lot of chatter on the radio, and the radio communication are very well depicted. You have all the code words that we use in real life. Pay attention, you will hear words like uh, tally, visual, um, FOX2, that means a uh, it seeking missiles has been shot. Uh, all those stuff are realistic and you really find basically the workload management you'll find in a, in a real jet. So that in my opinion is extremely realistic. And then you can also debrief yourself. You have a, a way to replace the entire mission afterwards from scratch. So if you really want to make yourself better from one mission to the other, you have all the tools available to you. Just like in the real world where we have a footage of every single mission and we can spend one, two, three, sometimes four hours debriefing a single 45 minute mission. So you really have all the tools that we do use in real life and the workload management is key to, to, to succeed during the mission.